Hey everybody, it's Betty from Betty's Garage here. Yeah, go ahead and laugh. It's a long, long story about how I got that nickname. and Maybe someday I'll tell you, but that's not why I'm here today. Um, before I get started, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, K1 Inc. Um, Ken uh, does some awesome videos. He's one of the people I've uh, enjoyed many of his videos and has taught me a lot about the game. Uh, there's Skippy Six Gaming, also another guy does really great videos, um, has taught me a lot about the game, and then there's Mumbo Jumbo, uh, he's really good, he's got some really crazy stuff, all of them have their unique styles and their own character, and I really like watching their videos, and I've learned a lot from them, so guys, big shout out to you, thanks for all the videos you made, and uh, keep them coming, really enjoy them. reason I'm here today is I wanted to do a little uh, video uh, for a friend of mine, King. He expressed some interest in my item sorter. Uh, I have one feature in my item sorter that I think is unique. I haven't seen anybody have one out there, although you know somebody might, but I've not seen it. Um, one of the feature most item sorters you'll see is off their uh, item elevator. They will have a light that you know, so the item elevator is active. It's pretty simple. You know, you you put a timer circuit on your item elevator. Um, items go from your chest to your droppers. Your droppers bring it up to your hopper chain. And while they're going off, you just take a signal off of them, put it to the light, so it's kind of cool. You, you know, when your item elevator's delivering stuff to your hopper chain and your sorter, so to speak, right? Um, another thing I've seen is people have taken and put in lights, you know, for one reason or another, how they've done it in different ways of doing it, not like I've done it here, but um, they'll put lights to let you know when your sorter is actually receiving an item from the uh, hopper chain. So that's kind of a cool feature. I like that. I've built that into mine. Only what I've done is I've taken my... Um, sorter and turn it 180 degrees around where this used to be the front of the sorter and this used to be the tail this is actually the front and this is actually the tail now for convenience I've put my chest over here you know just for the, this example but normally this would be the inside of my building and I'd be looking at the light here and my you know chest and I'm actually getting my items I'll be right down here um, but what the unique feature I had is you know it's nice to know that your item elevator is putting stuff into your system, but when you have a really, really, really big system, you know, two, three, four hundred items, however big you want to build it, um, because you're using, or I'm using hoppers, um, it can take quite a while to reach the other end of the sorter system, and so you never really know when your items are done because, you know, this light can go out, you you finish putting everything in, but, you know, they're still going down the trail, they're trying to make their way to their individual sorters to get to their cases, so... What I've done is I've added a, a circuit to the system that this light lights up whenever there's anything in our hopper chain. So how I did that is because I was able to turn uh, the sorter around, I can bring the hopper chain out here to where I can add comparators to each one of the hopper chain hoppers. And as items pass through the hoppers, they light up the comparators, which in turn give a one pulse tick to the repeaters. And I use repeaters to amplify it to make sure I got a good nice strong signal to run down my chain here um, they give a 15 15 on the power scale in this block here and then it runs down the chain um, makes it to that light and that light stays on until there's nothing in any at all in the hopper chain anymore <coughs> one unique situation when you're running down the chain is you'll you know you got a really long chain and you came along and you know 13 14 here I put at my 15th tick here um, it kind of blocks this one from giving me signal right so to overcome that what I did is I put this little add-on right here um, I just put a half block or a block if you want I just use half blocks um, three of them right here what happens is is say my item went to here and was only lighting up this I can still get my signal out of it by it passes it through this block to this repeater which comes back up and because repeaters don't allow things to flow backwards through I haven't made a loop um, and it just makes the power go forward so that's kind of how I call it my little bypass track so to speak but that's a little feature I put on my sorter to make it work and King liked it so let's go back to I guess the basics here and show how sorting systems work and stuff like that let's start with basically redstone you know for those who don't know and again I don't know what King knows and does know he's kinda new like me but um, when you have a torch or you have a redstone block or a lever or a button anything that produces a redstone signal it'll send that signal for 15 blocks and it reduces in strength all the way down to 15 it starts out very strong 
and it goes down and you can actually count it out to 15 at 15 we still have a signal I can put my repeater right at the 15th block and I still have a signal but at the 16th block I got nothing nothing at all and that's kind of the first place where repeaters will come in um, we can extend our signal out anything that comes in whether it's the strongest signal all the way back here or it's the weakest signal you can get um, what I call one tick redstone signal um, not to be confused with uh, redstone to lay off of repeaters but anyway um, it'll be increased by 15 and come out and allows you to go down the way that's kind of a cool feature uh, the next kind of cool feature for um, repeaters is they're like an insulator you can run repeaters next to each other and they won't cross over or you could run repeaters here and then redstone dust next to them and the two circuits won't cross so that's kind of a cool thing helps you do a lot of things in the redstone world um, a feature we depend on with repeaters is yeah there is a little bit of difference in delay from when that from that torch all the way down to here um, but it's negligible at best I mean it's you know I couldn't give you a time if you look it up on wiki they'd probably tell you but what I can to tell you is this is a dependable delay going across uh, a repeater um, from going from here to here is a one tick delay for each repeater you put down so one two three four five repeaters you know you just keep adding it up one two three four five ticks delay and if you um, increase the delay by moving the lever that goes from one tick to two tick then to three ticks then to four ticks um, that would be four ticks and then if this was on one it would be five ticks six ticks seven ticks or if you had them all on four again it, it would be four eight you know twelve sixteen on and on right um, to illustrate that we can come over here I need to get some redstone in the torch um, this would be what we call a uh, timer circuit or pulse generator how you activate it is you put down a torch and then destroy it right away and basically what it is is the redstone pulse generated by the torch is delayed just enough that it basically chases its tail around in a circle and you can make these bigger as much as you want and that redstone you can actually watch it go did 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 it but um that's kind of just to show how the delay works for redstone repeaters the heart of our system when we're talking about um sorting systems is to be able to use comparators comparators uh, let us measure the signal coming from a hopper or a chest um, by how many items is in that hopper or chest so right now um, let me take everything out and you'll notice we have no redstone signal coming out of our comparator um, but if I put just one item in I get a one redstone signal and turns one light on um, I'm just gonna put blocks here here and I'll explain why in a second when we fill our what I like to call our sensing hopper in our sorting systems um, the reason we want to do that is so that we make sure that the only one type of item can be pulled through this hopper from the hopper above to a hopper below it and um, when I put I believe it's um, 19 or 20 I go to my next level uh, of signal for my comparator. So now you'll notice I have two ticks of red no redstone signal here um, coming out of my comparator. And this is how they used to build old systems with a two tick system. So what happened is uh, on my two tick si system, it would uh, energize my repeater which would turn off my torch which would unlock my hopper and I'll explain that a little bit later but when this item here gets over that where my case is filling up and um, I'm not paying attention what happens is, is if I get enough higher I'll actually go to three ticks and there we go at 42 I get three ticks worth of uh, redstone signal and in the two tick system what that would allow would be is my because they're a tiled system moving this way is my third redstone tick would move over to my other side and it would activate its repeater which would turn off its torch which would allow everything to fall out of its bucket and once that happened it would cascade to the next one and the next one and the next one and pretty soon your whole system is really foobard um, 
The reason that can't happen in the three tick system, which is the system that we use, is because we use a unique item in these four columns. And I'll explain that when I go over to the sorter. But notice that when I fill, this is the maximum amount of number of items I can have in this first column. When I fill that first column, I still stay at three ticks. But if I put something else in there, forces it into the second column, then I would make it to four ticks. That would be bad because then my system would do the same as the two tick system. It would have a cascade failure on down the tiled system. But that can never happen because we put unique items in these four slots and then we make sure we never put that unique item through the system. And I'll show you how we do that. Anyways, um, that's one principle of sorting systems. That's how we uh, sense what's going to go into our chest and the locking hopper is the other part of the system. That's how we make sure we only get stuff moving through the system when we want because what will happen is, is our sensing uh, sorter will hit our repeater our repeater will turn off our torch, our torch will allow things to flow through. So let me show how we lock hoppers. I have a power source here. Um, I have items in my hopper. Nothing there. Nothing there. And uh, well, let me take that out so there's nothing there. How's that? We'll do that. Um, once I turn off my torch, you notice items start to flow um, out of this hopper and into the next hopper. And once I turn my power back on, items stop. Now, because this hopper is pointing at this hopper and there's nothing below it, the item flows from this hopper to this hopper. Um, you would think because this hopper is pointing at this hopper, the same would happen, but that doesn't. that's not what happens. It's a characteristic of hoppers that if there's a hopper below this hopper, um, it will always flow downwards. This hopper will pull items from this hopper before it allow it to move there. This hopper would have to be full before items would be allowed to flow from that hopper to that hopper. Hence, that's why they're all down there. Um, and <coughs> basically that's how our, our particular system works. We hit two ticks when our hoppers loaded the way it's loaded, when our sensing hopper is loaded. And then when another item comes that we sense that we want, it goes to three ticks. Three ticks energizes this block right here, which turns on this light, which then energizes this, uh, well, this block energizes um, this repeater which energizes this block and by doing so because this torch is attached to this block turns out that torch that de-energizes this block which unlocks that hopper and that hopper and allows our item to flow into that hopper quickly and then into our item chest but like I say I usually bring mine forward and end up over there but um the good thing about that is once the uh, item is moved through and something that's you know not needing to go through goes through the we lose our third signal here torch turns back on hoppers lock nothing goes through the system and so let me illustrate basically what our sensing hopper does and how it's important in our sensing hopper in these like I said these four columns um, and the, the reason it has to be these four columns is um, hoppers always want to be putting things into and pulling things from this first column first that's the important column. That's why we use it as our item sorted column. That's you know the, where we put the items that we actually want to pull. What you want to do is get yourself an anvil and put a block in the anvil and rename it. We gave it any unique name. Mine was Betty's Blocks. Didn't matter what kind of blocks, just that it had a name that's not a normal name for anything in Minecraft. And you have to put these four in every single hopper. I mean every single um, sorter. So you're going to be making lots of them. So get an anvil and make lots of them. Um, word of caution is once you're done, once all your sorters are filled up and you're good to go, get rid of every single one of those blocks. Throw them in a lava pit. You know, just make sure they're not in your game because if you did run them through your sorting machine, they would foobar your machine bad. Um, basically, our, if you did that, your overflow protection would go away. But as long as you're set up this way, um, like I said, even if this first column hits 64, all that's going to happen is if another item should flow through here that, you know, we wanted to pull, it's not going to pull, it's just going to continue on to the next hopper and it'll end up down there in our overflow box. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you, the reason I set mine up the way I did, and then I'll show you how it works, is because if we had a chest right here, um, because of the timing of a three tick system, I believe, that's it's my theory anyway, um, things will start getting stuck in the locked hopper right here. They won't make it all the way through. And here's why.
No, I'm not going to put all these blocks through, but I'll put some through. What I've done is I've um, built two silos here, one that goes hopper to hopper and one that goes hopper to uh, chest. And when I fill these boxes, it's just going to go down each silo and I've got comparators here to see what my signal is on these two hoppers here. This comparator for this hopper, this comparator for this hopper. Um, so let me put the items in. Notice that on the side that has the chest, our light lit up. <coughs> this is because when we're going hopper to hopper, the items are moving so fast through the hoppers that it doesn't have a chance to really turn this comparator on and light this up. Whereas when we're moving hopper to chest, it's actually visible. It's moving a lot slower from this hopper to the chest, from this hopper to the chest. So it spends more time in this hopper, which allows this comparator to light up, which allows us to see this. It, like I said, it's my theory that because of timing in this three tick system coming back and forth, this happens so fast, especially when it's just one item, um, that the item never makes it through the hopper. It, it gets caught in this hopper and never makes it past the chest because of the slowness. But when you have a hopper down here, it gets sucked on right through and it works perfectly. Um, so let's grab some items that we can sort and in this chest I have a non-stackable item and uh, item of 64 that we can put through that's a non-sortable item. Um, let me describe my item silo real quick. I have a dropper silo so I just stack a bunch of droppers up and the last one up here is facing the hopper so it ejects the items from there to the hopper and that starts our hopper chain and I've just put a little comparator timer circuit basically uh, on the bottom uh, dropper here and <coughs> this repeater every time it gets set off basically operates the bottom the middle and this hopper making sure that anything that's in this bottom hopper makes it all the way through up into this uh, hopper here and then all we need to do is run the chain again and we can do this this will actually stack infinitely you can just keep going up and up and up just remember it's every three sections is, is how it's built so comparator into a block, into a repeater. Uh, you're setting up just a, a timer type of circuit. The only thing is, is if you're running PS4 like I am, you need to put a one tick delay on the on the repeater next to the um, dropper so it operates it right. And then dropper puts it into the chain, comes down there. Everything ends up just like it's supposed to in there. So let's actually put it in. I use a trap chest so that if I put something in there that I don't want to, I can just quickly go grab it and pull it back out and we're all good to go. So let me put these to go through. I want those to go through first. And then we don't need that many. We'll make it faster here. We'll put this many in. And this is how it works. So once I close it, my item elevator light goes on then because things are in the system this light came on once I started sorting items my sorting item light came on notice it went out when my non sortable items are going through now Now items have left my item elevator and then they're out of my ice silo and we finished sorting them. So that's uh, the system and how it works and my theory behind uh, why things work the way they do. Um, hope you've learned something from this. I hope it helps. Like again, I'd like to give a shout out to K1. Ken, thanks a lot. Skippy6, keep them coming, man. You're awesome. And Mumbo Jumbo, man, love hearing from you, man. Love that accent. It's awesome, dude. So uh, this is the end of my video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave comments. Feel free to you know, hit me up, hit a like, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Just chat with me because uh, it's a fun world out here. So happy Minecraft to y'all. Peace out, everybody. Take care.